Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity with me, Bring It On. Let's take care of this trade agreement for Palagina. Our paths cross again, Gawas on Anams. One of my companions, a representative of the Valian Republics, wishes to discuss a trade issue with you. Orlin turns her gaze toward Palagina. Yes, the Valian godlike, blessed of Hylia. Palagina bristles and quickly spits out a response. So they say. Now, the main Foth's face shows no outward emotion, but her voice betrays annoyance at Palagina's interruption. And diplomat of the Duke's bells. I understand you were to be sent here with trade assurances from your masters. Revered Anna main Foth, it is true that I was chosen to convey these assurances, but understand that I was fashioned more for war than etiquette. Dorn smirks slightly. In these dangerous times, Perhaps it is better to send warriors to do diplomats' work. Palagina musters a weak smile. Indeed. Anna Mainfoth, regarding the exclusive trade agreement. Her voice quavers slightly, her golden eyes dart in your direction. Okay, I'm going to encourage her to follow her heart. Nod head, smiling warmly. Palagina steals herself. The Republics feel it would be in the best long-term interest of all parties if you maintain your traditional goods trades with the Deerwood. Down a main fault, long ears pitch forward. A strange turn. What do the Republics want, then? Palagina speaks quickly but confidently. The Andra Tara Pearls. Trade will be picking up quickly on them in the Eastern Reach. You'll buy them exclusively from us for the next five years. An exchange will be your exclusive market for Adraban and Karo Golan for the same period. Yana Mainfoth considers Palagina's words for several long moments. An interesting proposition, Valian. We'll send emissaries south to discuss the details at greater length. Your appearance here speaks well of your Duke's intentions. Palagina bows deeply. Beard Anna Mainfoth. That's it. My position in the Brotherhood gone. I can't believe I just made up new trade terms to the Glanfather and Anamenfar. Postenago. Algina's eyes are wide with panic. Right, so this option is both rational and cruel. And benevolent is not an opposite to my paladin's disposition, so I'm going to go with option one. Plus, as a companion, I don't have a contract with her, so I can be a little bit more caring because we're friends versus being client and uh, contract. Apalagina, you're the right thing for the Republics, even if the Dukes can't see it from their vantage. You can deal with their disapproval later. Verus, they have a saying in Biagepe, new gold clears even the oldest debts. If I'm right, all will be forgiven. If not, there's nothing I can do about it now. Yeah, and when it comes to duty versus doing the right thing, you should always do the right thing. I shall be quiet as a calm sea. And if those are that you're associated with punish you for doing the right thing. You probably don't want to be associated with them. Uh, so we do have a quest over at the Celestial Sapling. Oh, that's the inn. I had no idea. Hmm. Good. Adair can get a drink there as well, and that might be the last tavern he has to drink at. Mm hmm.
I'm right here. Doesn't look like I can actually reach that inspection yeah. point. They, they won't even try to approach it. Hmm. That sucks. The unusual stone pulses with warmth. This man looks up sharply as you approach, eyes going wide. You. You're the one the one he's looking for. He sets down his wine. You killed Lord Radrick. But what if I did? No, you don't understand. It didn't work. It I'm one of the guards at the keep. Was was one of the guards. He's killed most of them. The ones you didn't. Kolsk. He didn't last very long. Nothing but empty air him. That's enough to work for, I mean. Much nicer. But that didn't help when Radrick came back. Gods, the screaming. His eyes. It was like he was burning inside. He shudders. He says he's come back to lead us, like before. Says he's going to kill you for what you've done. I told him I'd find you. Give you his challenge. Do it all honorable. That sort of thing. He let me go. And I kept on running far as my coin let me. He laughs bleakly. Funny. Me running into you anyhow. I suppose you have some kind of trap waiting for me back there. Who? Me and the poor fools Radrick threw off the ramparts? I haven't got a thing to do with them. I'm begging your pardon. I'd rather keep as far from you as I can manage. Just gonna sit here and drink until I don't remember a thing. I wish you all the luck in the world, friend. There's something awful in that keep. Howling after your blood. Yeah. Well, that is an interesting turn of events. See anyone else to talk to besides the innkeeper. Good old haggard shoes. Good day, stranger. A middle-aged elven man stands behind the counter of the inn. He has a warm, open face and smiles pleasantly in greeting as you approach. Welcome, welcome. I'm always glad to see a new face. Take a seat where you like, my friend. It seems to me you've walked a long road. All are welcome here, and those with interesting stories most welcome of all. Uh, tell me about this place. Of course, a Lotharian's face brightens. I founded the inn many years ago. I don't know if y'all could hear that or not. My cat fell off the window, so. <laughs> I founded the inn many years ago, but in many ways its tale begins much earlier. It was while I was returning from a long journey south that I first heard the story of the tree upon which this inn rests. Hundreds of years ago, a strange event occurred. The sky was troubled that night, with many stars falling across the sky and one of those same stars began to plummet instead, towards Yora. It fell here, striking a young tree and burying itself within it like a fiery heart. But the tree survived, and over the years it grew, and grew, and grew, twice as big as its fellows in half the time, until it reached the size you see now, and grew no more. Hearing the tale, I knew I must find the truth, and you see it there. He gestures towards the large stone at the center of the room, Around the tree's heart, I built this inn, to welcome all travelers who might look upon it. Kinda looks over at the stone and grins. A fine story. I'll carry that one home. I've read that already. Uh, who are you? My name is El Eletherian. They call me Haggard Shoes, for all the walking I used to do, and all the boots I wore down. But those days are well behind me. My eyes have seen a great deal, now my ears get their fill from the travelers who come through here. A fine way to spend one's days, to my thinking. Uh, many kith come through here seeking work. Here, I'll introduce you. I'm gonna exhaust all this dialogue Hail real quick. Well met. Uh, welcome back. Is there anything I can do for you? I'd like a room, please. Of course. Something with a nice view, yes? 
That's a pretty solid bonus. Well met, friend. Can I see what you have for sale? Of course. We offer meals and some supplies. Have a look. Spirit Spiral. Plus 5% melee damage. Grants Whisper of Treason 3 per rest. These bracers are made from a coiled strip of bronze. Though tarnished and beaten almost beyond usefulness, they glow with a soft violet light. Of the many experiments of the ancient Inguithans, some involved infusing equipment with soul essence. The hammered patterns on these bracers suggest that they were originally pieces of Anima armor, but among the fragments of essence swirling inside, you detect not only the focused energy of an Anamot, but also the essence of the elven cipher who created the bracers and tried to enhance them with a fragment of his own soul. Okay, we'll grab that. Yeah. Good day to you. Good rest here. Whenever you play an RPG, if there are taverns you can rest at, always rest. Because it might be an event that triggers. Yeah. Following your lead. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's another tavern down. I have a moment. I'd like a word with you. Hail and well met. A slender woman in dusty leathers locks eyes with you. It's good to see someone from more civilized lands around here. Her unkempt hair sprouts in wavy black tufts. Despite the fine features that sculpt her face, a cleft chin completes her boyish appearance. I'm learning firsthand the many shortcomings of Glenfothan hospitality. Her gloved hands come to rest on the pommel of a long estoc, pinched low on her hip. I can almost forgive the hostility toward outsiders, but the temperate taverns and these watered-down drinks. Inexcusable. I hope I don't seem too forward, I need to help my friends, and you look like the right person for the job. A sly smile carves a dimple on her cheek. Which is to say, you're not Glenfothan, making you the closest thing I've got to an ally in this paranoid land. Gives you a coquettish sideways glance. And allies, well, they help each other, do they not? Who are you? The woman pats the dust off her leggings and gives you an exaggerated curtsy. Where did I leave my ambassadorial manners? She flashes a mocking smile. I am Quinwit. Quinneth. Pleasure to meet you. She lifts an eyebrow with a blushing smirk. For the time being, though, I'm just another Estramore minding her own business. What help do you need? My friends have drawn some unwanted attention. Quinneth looks to both sides, scanning for uninvited listeners. Unfathen scouts. Not just any mob of local zealots, the Fangs. He pauses to let the name settle in the air. The Fangs are a brutal, relentless bunch, eager to make an example of troublesome outsiders. As for why I need your help, her smile widens as she speaks. I need someone to warn the expedition that trouble is coming. I need someone ready to fight, if it comes to that. She taps her hand on the palm of her estoc. With any luck, reach my friends before the fangs do. But if not, the fangs have a reputation to uphold. This might require spilling blood. Why aren't you with the rest of your friends? Why not warn them yourself? Her posture stiffens at the question. It was my turn to handle far patrol. I spotted the fangs on my trek back to camp. I knew that rejoining the main group would risk leading the enemy right back to the expedition. I know the woods. I know how to stay quiet, but I didn't want to stake my friends lives on my ability to sneak past expert hunters like the Fangs. If they noticed me warning my friends, we'd have been overrun. One of the tilts her head to the side and points to you with a grin. 
But if they notice me and some reinforcements, like say you, well, at least then we could scare them off or put up a good fight. What did your friends do to draw the attention of the Fangs? Just setting foot near Glanfoth is a good way to offend the tribes. I don't know how they picked up our trail. I suspect one of our newer scouts didn't cover his tracks well enough. When I spotted the Fangs, they were retracing a path the expedition had taken days before. Tell me more about your expedition. I like to think we're on a mission of reclamation. Gwyneth darts a shrewd smile. It is said that our armies left behind many valuables and their hasty retreat from Irglonfoth at the end of the War of the Black Trees. So the way I see it, we're simply gathering up what our ancestors left behind. I doubt the Glonfothans agree with me on this. She adds with a dimpled grin. My expedition set out from Defiance Bay, heading directly east to cross into Glenfothan lands. I split off once we arrived at the Bale, the natural frontier between our nations. The plan was for me to keep an, my eyes on the Glenfothans, while the main group scoured the target area. For days we eluded them. She walks her fingers back up, her fingers over the back of her leather glove, leaving a trail of, on its dusty surface. But the fangs got wise to our presence. Okay, so this does explicitly say, warn the expedition. I'm not saying I'm gonna fight, but if we can talk everyone down, that's what we're gonna do. I'll help you warn the expedition. Gwyneth smiles with an overt display of dimples. Excellent. I know I could count on you. She leans in and whispers. Assuming the things didn't already get them, my friends should now be at or around the Pilgrim's Trail in the North Weald. Now the plan was to camp along a trail leading to a temple of Hylia. Find my comrades. Warn them the things are coming. Let them clear out of the forest. I'll head out first on my own to see if I can't lead the things astray and buy us some time. He pulls her S-talk a few inches out of the vit scabbard and cracks a smile. If the gods smile on us, we won't have to draw steel. Should it come to that, I'm glad you're on our side. Huh? Yeah, we'll see. The cool breeze whistles through the leaves. The bed rocks with the gentle swing of the tree. If you say so. Got it done. Two diamonds. Okay, these are both new. Beloved land, poems from Irglonfoth. The tree, the wind. You shall hear the voice of the wind. Its beauty resplendent, unseen, intangible. Its tongue whispers the oath. I move, I carry. Always will I fly. And always will I change. For nothing is permanent. Nothing escapes my grasp. You shall call the heart of the wind. It travels swiftly, fiercely, untouchable. Its fist howls the promise. I push, I break. Never will I stop. Never will I land. All is in my domain, and all bend to my will. Who shall resist the force of the wind? Its anger presses, pushes, drives. And the tree answers its call. Yes, your voice is loud. Your name is grand. Your force is mighty. I shall not resist. I will not defy. I will bend. Your powers shall wash over me. You want me to bow? I will bow. But I will always stand. I will always return. I will always recover. That is my pledge. That is my promise. That is my oath. Shape of a tree. I wrote a poem in a uh, university. Where I played with the shape of the poem and I put it in the shape of a bee. The soldiers are not fully armed, or even decently dressed, without some basic knowledge of the Glenfothan language. Your scouts cannot eavesdrop, our captured soldiers cannot recognize the words of their captors, or if our officers cannot answer a call to parley, we fail. Knowing just a few simple face painter words could mean the difference between tactical success and defeat in detail. Glenfothan writing is, like a deerin, 
adapted from the old Valian alphabet brought overseas by the Adherans long ago. The Glenfothans put their own spin on this alphabet, but there are some noticeable differences that can confuse the uninformed. A and A is the difference between Pa and Pat. Okay. That's handy. Uh, e and E is the difference between Hen and Hay. I and I, okay. This one I've been curious about. I didn't know if it was supposed to be a soft or a hard eye. But is the difference between ilk and eel. O and O is the difference between oats and ot. W and W is the difference between butt and boot. Okay. Note that last part. Near Glonfoth, letter W acts as our letter U. That changes things a bit. Speaking with a consonant WWW sound is a perfect way to alert Glonfothan to the fact that you're a dear wooden struggling to learn the language. See Estramore in the glossary below. And keep in mind these tricky differences. DH is used for a hard thorn sound, such as with this or that. Conversely, TH is a softer sound of Glenfothan, barely vocalized, like when one says thief or thought. SI sounds like a soft sh sound, like ship. Put an accent on it, and SI sounds like she. Okay, yet yeah, H sound in either case. There's no replacement for actually learning Glenfothan by immersion, but to get you started, here's some important words that you and your soldiers should know. Anam soul. Anamfoth, plural Anamfatha, spiritual leaders of the tribes. Argues is armor, O Argues. Yenin, life. Blaith is wolf. Cassis battle, Delam leaf, Den man. Enfoth, princess. Estramor, Estramor, plural Estramorwin, foreigners. A foth is plural fatha, prince or princes, Juan winter. How oh, was a W sound? That so doesn't have a accent mark, so it'd be just a. Was it Guan? Guan? Yeah, it's a U sound, so it just, it'd be Guan, wouldn't it? So it's just like how it's spelled. A uh, Henun? Woman? Uh, I in lay place, Pames Walker, Ramen Building. Uh, this is Re, so Re or Rio. Wise ones, right? Yeah. Uh, the A sound with the Scath. Alright, so Scath, not Scoth. Uwin? Yeah, Maiden. Uh, where with? Where with? No, sorry. Got the W mixed up again. Ah, it's a lot to learn all at once. So, Wayrith. And Wayriththa. But see, this one has the TH in it instead of the D H. I wonder if that's a typo. Hmm. Alright, I've read this one before. I speak to uh, Solera. Trilary. Huh? Or not. Alright, need to find a monk. Also, I, I wish there's Hat head up. Hopefully I'm doing that right. There's a bunch of monks. Right, I've read that before. Yes, I'm assuming that we'd have to fight these hey. guys if we had opened up the missive, which we didn't do. Their contracts very seriously. Yeah. Hail and well met. The monk massages his temples, his face buried in his palm. As you approach, he looks up. This room needs a proper door, he mutters. My brothers and I rented this space. We may have some measure of privacy in this foreign land. Perhaps you could find another room here in the inn. Uh, who are you? 
Briefly opening his mouth to answer, Monk swallows his words. He looks you up and down, carefully choosing his response. My brothers and I were having a private discussion in the room we rented for our use. Please, there's a tavern full of people who would provide you with the banner you seek. What brings your order to this place? We travel where the teachings take us, the monk mutters, his voice slow and measured. Not that it is any of your business. Oh, I should have brought Zawa with me. I met another monk in robes like your own. He died of his wounds right as I found him. Monk's eyes widen, his face curl on a crackling barrage of propping joints. Robes like ours, you say? Was he carrying anything? Did he tell you anything? Hand you anything? Please, we've been waiting for another of our order to meet us here, and if you found him... All eyes fall to the floor as the monks begin to whisper chants in unison to their fallen friend. Show him the message. He gave me this missive. Hand me that. The monk exclaims as he snatches the missive from your grasp. Almost immediately, his face turns red. I mean, please. This is of great importance. Breaking the seals, the monk unrolls the handwritten scroll contained within and quickly reads the message, his lips breathlessly mouthing the text. He turns to address his brothers. My brethren, the Ark Martyr has been sent word. At long last, we now have what we need. Thank you, stranger, the monk says, folding his hands in front of him as he, de as he bows deeply. Your honest soul is to be applauded. I admit I was surprised. When you handed me the message, I expected the seals to be broken. The monk turns red, his face smiling for the first time. I am glad to see common decency is not yet lost from this world. He reaches into the folds of his robes. Here, your honesty must be rewarded. I love Brachia. Range grazes reflected back at attacker. The small shield is of lightweight construction, intended to be maneuvered in as sw swift and dynamic a fashion as its namesake. Despite the fine craftsmanship, it is most famously known as the weapon of a pit fighter, who uses shield in a distinctive dance-like fighting style to turn his opponent's attacks against them. Hmm. Alright, so I think we're done here in the tavern. We're going to head out of here and actually go back to Cad Nua real quick. Then the rewards for the quest that was just completed. And then I think we'll go back to Radric's Hold before we continue with Twin Elms. Split up some of the exploration and talking with some action. So I'm really excited to see what's going on at Radric's hold because we killed him. Real quick. Don't want to waste that. It's going to make this legendary. She's going to keep this current loadout for the rest of the game, I think. So I'm okay with that. And this is already legendary, isn't it? Oh, it's only superb. Oh, I can't go to legendary. Don't have enough space. So what am I weak against? So we have slash, pierce, and shock. Let's do crush. I keep it well-rounded. And most of his stuff, except for this. I don't know if he's going to keep this or not. Yeah.
Alright, so Paladina's quest is done. I'm actually going to swap her out for Durance. Because he has the item to summon Animots. And we need to kill a few more of those for... Robbie's staff. Sure. So I haven't done any fighting for a couple episodes. It'd be good to break it up with uh, whatever's going on at Radrick's Hold. Your fortress is impressive in its own little way. Gores. What? Right, because it's... Yeah, this one. Alright, let's fix my formation real quick. I think I prefer... Let's see. Let's do it that way. Sure. All right, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, next episode, we'll go to Radrick's Hold and see what's going on. We got a quest. Yeah, the champion of Barith. Either way, I'm gonna call it here for now. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.